G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Automotive Carnage. Today we've got something pretty special. We are out here again in the great Australian Outback and we've been invited onto a station who has given us free reign and permission to go wherever we want and look for as many of these glorious wrecks as we can find. So we have been given permission to explore this amazing and very large station. We are talking, this thing's the size of a small European nation. Think Luxembourg? Yeah, this station is bigger than that. So that gives you an idea of just how massive it is. And also, the history stretches back over 100 years. So as we go through and look around, you'll notice that we find vehicles from the early 20s all the way up to fairly modern gifts. So this is going to be really, really exciting. And the other amazing part is that the current station owners, they want to clean up. There's, as I said, a hundred years worth of history, hundred years worth of scrap metal, and a hundred years worth of old vehicles just lying about here. And they want to clean it up and get rid of it all. So everything that I show you today and over the next couple of episodes is for sale. So if there's anything that you see or anything that you need, please let me know at automotivecarnage at gmail.com and we can see if we can work out a deal because a lot of this gear is is usable it, it really is it's been sitting out here in the australian outback in the desert for gosh knows how many years and a lot of the stuff is still pretty good this pile here is a bit dented and banged up but there's that odd little bit of chrome there's that odd little bit of trim that you might need that is sitting out here just wasting away so if you do see anything please let me know in the comments but more importantly email me automotivecarnage at gmail.com and we'll get you in touch with the owners so without further ado we have quite a few vehicles to get through here today um, a couple that will be interesting a couple that are make you question how on earth did they get out here so let's go to handheld and let's see what we can find so let's just jump straight into it with this beautiful old bedford here now hopefully these flies don't bother us too much but you know we're in the australian outback so get the old aussie wave going on anyway big beautiful old bedford um, found what I believe to be the ID tag lying on the ground. So we have a TJ cab uh, 2269 um, General Motors Holden, so built here in Australia, which is really, really cool. So inside here, you've got a massive straight six engine. And uh, what I find particularly interesting about this is the tiny little um, single barrel carb that will have fed this, which is um, a lot less fuel than what I would have thought. But anyway, Still got some pretty good bits and pieces on here. Ultimately, a bit of garn art. Um, it's, it's not really worth restoring, but you never know. You come around this side, we still have wheels. Um, we still have a lot of door handles. Oh, we've even got the speedo surround in here. Come check this out. So that's pretty sweet. Unfortunately, the glass is gone. I don't think it's going to work too much. Still got fairly solid chassis. Julie's on the rear. Just an awesome truck. Will have done quite a fair amount of work back in the day. So next to us here, We've got the old faithful FJ Cruiser. This one though has seen better days. There's not too much left of it. It's been cannibalized to save some of the old station vehicles. Um, still got some really good glass in the doors there. Um, but that's about all really. Some good fenders, good cowl. Oh, still got the face on it. All right, so still got a good face there. Bit of a homemade grill going on. And that's what I love about these old stations is we're so far away from the city we are will be close to 500 kilometers away from our nearest um major town and then um, over a thousand kilometers away from perth so back in the day you would have just had to make do with what you had lying around and you still got to do that now like the ingenuity that when you can't just walk down to super cheap you can't just walk down to your local engineering shop you've got to make do with what you have and you'll notice that say on some of these vehicles just the the ingenuity to keep the car running, to keep it going, and to modify it so that it is better suited for their purposes out here. So anyway, 
Not too much left on the old FJ, so let's move on to my personal favorite. If we dodge all these spiders. And we have the old Valiant Ute. So what's really cool about this one and something that I learned the other day is it's not actually a Valiant. It's a Dodge 106C. So yeah, same body style as the Valiant VCU, but the more poverty pack spec, the more industrialized one. So we didn't have chrome on the bumper. We had a lot less trim on the outside, way more utilitarian. Um, slant 225, well the block's still there, but you can see that it's been cannibalized to help save some other vehicles. All right, come around this side and have a check out the inside. One of the other major differences with the Dodge 106 compared to the VC was the lack of trim inside as well. So you've got the bench seat, uh, this would have been column shift auto. Yes, it's only got two pedals um, and nothing fancy on the dash, just a whole bunch of cold hard steel. Um, the other dead giveaway is up here on the B pillar. We don't have the Valiant logo stamped in there. So just little bits like that let you know that this is the more poverty packed Dodge as opposed to the more upmarket Valiant VC. So, and also interesting, these were designed to carry 1,500 pounds, not 1,200 pounds like the Valiant, so. I like this, this is a cool car. Um, there might be plans for this one in the future, but uh, we're still working on that, we'll see how we go. And right behind us there on the camera, we've got a one tonne of frame. And that's about all that's left of it. So let's move on. So coming over to this way, side of the tip, um, it starts to get a bit older and um, a bit more unique in the vehicles. Uh, obviously not the old HQ, uh, HQ Belmont. Again, not much left of this old girl. We come down this side, the whole front's been taken away for another vehicle. Doors taken off, still got some of the seat left, fuel tank, not much trim left inside there. Oh, but a beautiful sun visor. Ah, I got rust on the edges there, that's a shame. All good there. So again, obviously being a station, vehicles came out here to work. So a lot of utes, um, a lot of wagons, a lot of vehicles that can carry lots of load. Um, this one over here, I believe this is a Dodge on its side here. Um, let's go check out the engine on that. This one cracks me up, I've never seen this before. Check out the corrosion on the engine. Like it is just eaten away at all the parts around the cylinder walls there. I've never seen rust or damage quite like that before. Really, really interesting. Man, someone's really had a good hack at the firewall. There is not much that can be saved on this old girl, unfortunately, but really cool shape. What will have been left of it anyway. All right, moving on. We got the, we'll come back to that one afterwards when we get to the front of it. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of Ford fans who understand what's going on there. This one though, the old Landy, a lot of Land Rovers out here. So obviously sometime in the past, one of the station owners um, had a thing for Land Rovers. They were known to be very reliable and very rugged. Um, out here, there was a very prominent uh, earth worker and he built a lot of the old roads and he used Land Rovers wherever he went. So my theory, completely theorized, is that the success he had in forging new tracks that a lot of people use still today uh, for recreational use and four-wheel driving um, had an influence on the stations around here and old mate who owned the station ended up getting a whole bunch of Land Rovers because there is so many there's not one over there that old girl's seen better days there's not too much left on that one unfortunately same as this one too what's really cool is that the majority of the bodies are made of aluminium and so they're still in really good condition as long as they're not dented or torn up. So really cool to see some old Land Rovers. I like old Land Rovers. All right, what else we got here? Oh, another yellow Land Rover. So again, another Land Rover. This one's been set up to be, do some pretty heavy work with all the bar work that's there. Um, the cage goes right over the roof as well. So I'm going to assume it was a bull truck, um, which they used during mustering. But uh, otherwise, that is pretty heavy duty, that bar on that, bar work on that thing. All right, moving on to this old girl. I can't quite pick it. I think it's a Chevy, but I'll let you guys let me know. Um, the badges are gone. There's a lot of stuff here which is older than what I'm used to looking for. So I'm still learning um, about what a lot of this gear is. So I'm going to say old Chevy, but you guys let me know in the comments what this actually is. Beautiful old girl and still has it's flathead V8 in there. Is there any markings on that? There's markings, but they're not gonna give me any clues. Just think of 
the work that this old girl has seen in its day, like all the timber framing in here, which is awesome. Bit of patchwork, cover up some of the rust. What have we got going on inside? Man, that's some all right dash pieces there. Is that cracked? No. They're pitted, but they're complete, so they'll come up with a good re-chrome. Now, like how someone's opened up like a tin can. <laughs> all right, and again, a Nile Land Rover. This is what I'm saying. These do, at some point in this station's history, absolutely loved old Land Rovers, so. EJ Sedan, so this is really cool. So I reckon, and again, just my assumptions, that this one was the station's wife's car at some point. I don't know, just something about it tells me that this is what she drove to go into town, go to church on Sunday in. It's just a funky little car. Unfortunately, the old gray motor is gone. I think the transmission has gone as well, but we have absolutely beautiful grill. That's complete. And we've got all the chrome work up along the edge of the bonnet. It's been dragged or something's been dragged over it um, along here, along here. The roof is absolutely shagged. Good dash parts though still. Not a bad example. Okay, so then we go around the back here. Got the back of the old Land Rover. Oh, they're a bit more bit up than I remembered last time I came out here, but that's all right. How's this for an old beast? Old comma. Thing has got an absolutely monster size engine in it. Big old diesel there. Oh, that sounds intense. Really cool. The other thing I've seen too um, at a station when I was coming across the Great Central was um, they had taken the front of a big cab like this and then inside here they'll set up barbecue plates. So it actually became their, their barbecue and then they made like a cool custom tray on the back which became the fire pit. It was a really cool setup of a rig. Right, I want to go check out this ute over here. The last two vehicles absolutely intrigued me. Um, one's really, really cool and the other one is, well it's got a V8 so of course it's cool. Let's go have a look. So a beautiful old Ford mainland ute and it still has the original Y block uh, V8 in there. Um, well, what's left of it anyway? Obviously, it's, I would say this thing's had a blown head gasket or valve train issues, and that's why they've started to pull it apart. Got so far and went, you know what? Stick it in the yard for the rest of the vehicles. Anyway, just layers of bog. Roof is completely rusted out, doors are missing, floors gone. But that side profile there, just check out those lines down the back of that tray just look absolutely amazing. So, yeah, just a cool find. I, I love I love these old vehicles, man, they're so cool. These are spokes. So it's some old homemade station trailer with old wire spoke vehicle wheels off a um, 1920s or something vehicle. Anyway, this has got to be probably my favorite. It just gives off such a, like a, a a Bonnie and Clyde kind of feeling to it. Big old beautiful, um, what was it again? International. Yep, made in the USA, international. Massive straight six, again, tiny little carburetor. Um, just to, you know, suck in that kerosene they were using. Just the shape of this grill is, oh, I, I'm, I'm in love with it. It's, it's just got presence, it really does. It has so much presence. Unfortunately, the rear, as you can see, has all been smashed down it's, um, yeah, she's seen better days, the poor old girl. But who knows? There might be some use into it for one of you fellas. Uh, old Holden Ute. Um, I think it's a Holden. Actually, no, no, sorry, I'm getting confused. There's a Holden over there. This, I don't know what this one is. Um, any it's crushed. That's what it is. <laughs> any ideas, guys? Let me know. Fender mounted, sorry, guard mounted uh, mirrors there. What's the inside look like? What have we got going on in here? So again, a lot of the instrument panels have been uh, stripped out and taken away. So that's really interesting. Floor's actually not too bad, considering it's sitting on the on the ground there. But the entire drive line has disappeared. So, really cool. Oh, here's a good giveaway to what this might be. Check out the um, door locks. That's a really unique design. So, no doubt one of you gurus will be able to tell us what this beautiful old ute is. 
and it's got a bed full of parts. What have we got here? We've got some holding bits and pieces, gearbox. I'd say these have come off. Oh, they're red motor. So, oh, there we go. Holding 186. Cool. Where's the rest of the engine? So, yeah, definitely red motors. Man, that's a um, fairly cracked head. I don't think that's going to be uh, Kimmy Wilder back together. So, the absolute best flask is this absolute homemade contraption. I have no idea what it was built for. The current station owner has no idea what it was built for or what it was even built from. So rear wheel drive, you've got a tiny little four cylinder um, up the front here, little carb. It's not a cross flow. Um, the gearbox selectors even like two separate handles. I don't know what's going on here, but it is funky cool. I love it. I love the ingenuity. I just wish I knew why it was built you never know, we might find out later on. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed our little walk around of just one of the many car dumps that is out and about on this station. We are in the gold fields in WA, so if you see anything you like, hit us up. Again, automotivecarnage at gmail.com, and we'll see if we can work something out. Everything in this one is a bit uh, mangled, a bit trashed, but as we get closer towards the station next week, we have got some absolutely beautiful uh fjs we've got an f350 we've got a beautiful old dodge truck um and i think there's some hz's in there as well so stay tuned for that thank you all for watching all my cards and we'll catch you on the next one see you later